Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sport. And they left it a bit late, but the Bulls have done it. They did get a bonus point victory over the Sharks down in Durban to ensure that they'll finish at the very least second place on the URC log, which will give them a guaranteed home semi-final, assuming they can get through their quarterfinal next week. So job done as far as Jake Wise is concerned. But maybe not the best performance. They sealed the South African Shield, um, which was sealed pretty much before then anyway. Um, but uh, a big effort needed from the Bulls. And the Sharks trying to finish on a bit of a high. Their last game of the season, they've already got their Champions Cup qualification. They couldn't do anything really in the URC. So it was a bit of a formality really uh, for them to show up and play this weekend. But they played well um, and they made it difficult for the Bulls, which is, I think, probably the main thing. You know, try and earn your uh, earn your spot in that uh, in the, to get that potential home semi-final. Now, before we break the game down, please do smash a like on the video. Please do uh, subscribe to the channel as well uh, it was an interesting game which uh, took a while to get going and uh, was yeah proper sort of arm wrestle at times uh first points came via siamasuku who grabbed his first try thanks to a uh, a bit of a blunder from the bulls a liner that was thrown well, well over uh bounced with the legs of cameron honeycomb kerstina come stepped uh, picked it up and popped it backwards but it ended up just throwing it at the feet of uh, uh siamasuku just grabbed it and popped it over and then added the extra two. So 15 minutes in, Sharks had a 7-0 lead. But the Bulls clawed it back with a good try. Uh, from, scored by David Creel, Jan Kobola. Adding to that, as uh, eight minutes later, uh, from Rony Moore with Jan Hussen adding the extras. To give them a 12 points to 7 lead at half time. And then they didn't have a lot of early dominance. They had to sort of claw their way back in and sort of grind their way back into the game. Uh, in the first half, in, in, in the first sort of 10 minutes of the second half, uh, yellow card to Sharks should have provided an opening for the Bulls to have had a go and to start really building it into into the into the half and to start dominating um, the various sort of uh, aspects of the game. Wasn't to be though. Took a while for them to get going. Um, and the first try of the second half coming um, from Akapana Murphy we ended up scoring a double in the 55th minute. Uh, some really good rolling moors there from from the Bulls as well throughout the game. Uh, Young Hudson adding an extra two there. Didn't Richardson however got one back. Uh, with a very nice piece of individual strength and power shown by him. Masuki adding the extras to give the Sharks a bit of hope. But Akafana Merva going over in the 76th minute to get that bonus point for the Bulls. Uh, and Chris with adding the extras, uh, which didn't really matter in the end. So the Bulls finished with 13 wins out of 18. 66 points is the main thing. They are currently top of the log as I record this with Munster still to play Ulster. Should Munster lose that game, then the, or even draw the game, then, then the Bulls will um, finish top of the log. If Munster win that game, then they will go first, and Bulls will be, have to settle for second. Uh, so the big thing, I think, for me from the Bulls is that they keep talking about that home semifinal, how important it is. You've got to get through that quarterfinal first. I think that's the one thing that I would say has been a little bit worrying from a Bulls perspective is the rhetoric about, all oh, that home semifinal. Yes, it's important. Um, and, I mean, how amazing it would be to get a home final, for example, but um, you've got to get through that quarterfinal first, and then you can worry about that semifinal. Uh, in terms of some big performances, um, there were some nice uh, stats uh, from a couple of players. Uh, I thought uh, Elric Lowe got man of the match. Obviously, was very, very good. Uh, if we look at the stats over here, Apple Fassi carried it nine times, as did France Arfento. I thought it was very nice. A nice couple of nice um, touches. James Bento with 16 tackles. Pips Boutlez with 14 tackles. Ruin O'Keefe with 14 tackles um, as well. Uh, in terms of line breaks, it was Edwin Caton, Tupac Tunu, and Kanan Moody who topped that. Uh, in terms of the, the meters carried, 116 from Kanan Moody, um, 72 from Afri Fassi, who continues to put his hand up, really, and, and try and sort of force his way back into that block conversation. Uh, if you look at the match summary with regards to some of the stats, uh, territory was very, very even, as was uh, possession, 48-52 in both uh, aspects. Scrums, for example, uh, they kind of ebbed and flowed, but I definitely felt that the Bulls had the better scrum. They were dominating the Sharks quite often, which is interesting with that Sharks spring up front row. Uh, Lineouts for the Bulls, 100% as well, across 17. So good to see their set piece functioning. Um, yeah, um, Andrews Beck will be very happy with that, the Bulls line coach. If we look at the attack, for example, uh, it, yeah, quite a running game, to be honest. Uh, there were similar amount of carries, similar amount of post-contact meters, both teams well over 200. Um, 12 line breaks from the Sharks, 7 from the Bulls. Uh, if we look at turnovers, 5-1 uh, from the Sharks, 5-1 from the Bulls, 16 loss for me by both of them. So quite similar across the, the entire sort of stat spectrum, really. Uh, similarly with defense as well, Sharks slightly better defense percentage. But uh, we all know how that's becoming a bit of an irrelevant stat these days. For the Sharks, into the off-season. Good to see the most of the uh, Springbok players come through okay. Bongi Manambi went off um, and it was okay. 
you know, Vincent Cock, Oxen Chair, for example, um, and none of them coming off with what looked like injuries or any knocks. So good to see those, the Springbok players coming through, all they're good. Uh, for the Bulls, while they'll continue next week, we'll have to wait and see exactly who their opponents will be um, and uh, who will be welcoming two lofters. But let me know what you thought about the game, as well as what the Bulls' chances of going all the way are down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.